Game Maker, how to do a little bit of splash damage when one of your weapons hits one of your uh, enemies or an object in the game. Here we go. Uh, you'll see what I've already made here just to set us up. I have a player. When the player hits B, I create a bomb uh, that moves slowly out to the right. Or, sorry, slowly in the direction the player was moving. Uh, eventually, that bomb is going to hit a wall, but I'm going to set it up so it collides with monster. We're going to do a little bit of code here. Now you'll see in my room that I have set up, I have a couple monsters there. And what I'm going to do is I'll make a few more so they're really close to each other, just so we can see this actually working, that it is damaging them. I'm actually going to take a few of those out. Perfect. Okay, now we're ready to get going on this one. What I'm going to do is the ghosts have already actually, or the monsters have already been set up. So that each monster has some hit points and health bars that are drawn. That's in one of our videos called Monster Health Bar. So that we will actually be able to see the splash damage occurring. Now let's get back to that bomb we had going. So with the bomb. Hits monster, here's the actual splash damage part. A little bit of code. This one's going to be a few more lines. Now this one uses a few ideas that are a little harder than your just basic uh, collides and simple variables. Here we're going to have a little bit of loop work, and we're also going to have a little bit, of, uh, a little bit of methods that do some fancy tricks for us. First thing I want to know here is I'd like to be able... So this routine actually has a few tricks to it. Hopefully uh, you can follow along. Certainly if you've done some of the videos in the Game Maker course, uh, this seems easier. But right off the bat, uh, just try to follow along with it. First thing, you have a bomb. We're coding inside of the bomb right now. That's important to remember. And we've hit a monster. Now the problem with this is, is usually Game Maker makes it super easy. We can code with the bomb, and you could say with other and code the monster. But what you want to do in this case is you want a whole bunch of monsters to possibly be effective. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to remember where the bomb's location is. And you're going to see why I'm doing this in a second. So I'm going to call this X position and variable Y position. Now when you make variables this way, these are called local variables. They only basically live or exist until this page of code finishes. Then these variables are tossed away. There's also something else nice about these variables. If you happen to use a with statement, they still work. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So here we go. Let's remember where our bomb is. X position equals the X position of this bomb. Y position equals the Y position of this bomb. Now, what I have to do, having this information stored in X post and Y post, I have to ask every single bomb on the screen, hey, check to see how far away you are from the bomb. And if you're within a certain distance, you have to take some damage. So, this is easily done with a with statement. So I can say with every single monster in the room right now, and that's the with statement there. Every monster is going to run this code. They're basically going to find out how far away. So how far equals point distance. Game maker method, right? That'll tell us how far from a certain point to another point the pixel distance will be. And so you have your x1, y1, x2, y2 here. Well, I want to know. Remember, we're speaking in the eyes of the monster right now. So the monster is going to take their X and Y position and find out how far away it is from those two local variables we made, X position and Y position, which were keeping track of the bomb okay, and where it was located. Now, you can sort of see why we made these local variables here. If you would have thought about it here, I can't just go and put x 
and y in there again, right? That wouldn't really make any sense. And it doesn't really make any sense. I can't really do this either. Oh, bomb dot x. Because what happens if you have a whole bunch of bombs on the screen, you don't know what bomb you're talking about. So specifically, this bomb that's running the code here, I've saved its x and y position for this reason. Now that I know how far away the bomb was from this particular monster, now I'm going to do a little bit of a calculation, or I'll say if how far is less, let's say less than 30 hit points is hit points minus 2. Now you have to remember, I am coding inside of a monster once you use this here. Every single monster is going to use this code. And every monster does have a hit points variable that I've already given it. I could do a little else here. Else if. How far. Is less than 60. Now let's make it a little bigger. Less than 70. Hit points is hit points. Minus 1. And that's how I'll do. For, or sorry, that's all I'll do for this one. So you sort of get the idea here. If I'm less than 30, I'll take off 2. Else, if I happen to be less than 70, so this will handle from uh, 30 all the way to 69, then hit points only goes down by 1. And I mean, you could have as many divisions here as you wanted. You could even write a little math equation, right? That says, you know, the farther you are, or the closer you are, the more damage that gets done. Maybe I'll add that in afterwards. So let's give this a little go and see what happens. Now keep in mind, I haven't done I haven't done anything here to actually say, well, if the ghost's life drops. Haha, <laughs> I forgot to destroy the bomb. That's not very good. I forgot to destroy the bomb. Here's my destroy the bomb code. I've had that copy and uh, pasted waiting, so I wouldn't have to type that in. So there we go. Make an explosion. Destroy the bomb, right? That's running this code. Now let's give it a go. There goes our bomb. Poof, explodes. And you can see here, right? Some took two damage, just that one, I guess. And others that were a little closer by took one. So not too bad. Now for those that like their math and would like to do a little equation here, you could replace these if statements with something a little different. So I'm just going to comment those out and I'll give you a slightly different if statement we could do. The closer we are, the more damage. So what I could do is I could do something like this. I could say closeness equals 100 minus how far. So if you think about it, if the distance from the bomb was, let's say, 10 pixels, 100 minus 10 is 90. Okay? So it's quite high. If my distance was, let's say, 100 away, 100 minus 100 is 0. And so that's not going to be any damage at all. Now you may say, what happens if you are 300 away? 100 minus 300 is negative 200. Okay, I don't want to get into the weird negatives. So let's just take care of this right now. We'll go closeness. We'll say if the closeness has dropped below 0, then closeness is 0. We can't let this go into the negatives. Now after that, we can also do this. Closeness equals closeness divided by... Now if I have set 100 to be my distance, right, the maximum range to do any damage, let's say I'm going to divide this by 10. 
So we saw before we had 90, 90 divided by 10, 9, that's still a lot of damage. Let's divide this by uh, something like 30. And so you can see here if you run some pretend numbers, if how far was 0 away, 100 minus 0 is 100. 100 divided by 30 is 3 point something. So we'll get 3 damage. So that's not bad. Actually, let's just change that. We'll make it 25. Now that's how much you can actually take off. We could actually call this the damage that we're going to do. And then we can do a little hit points is hit points minus damage. If you actually follow this along for some pretend numbers, you'll see that it'll never go negative. And the closer you are, the more damage you get. Let's see what this does. And it appears to work, right? It's getting the damage to the ones that are closer. So it actually is not a bad little routine. Uh, if you got lost in the math there, that's okay. You know, some of you that just like your adding and subtracting, that's fine. This is sort of getting a bit, you know, doing a couple divides too. I can see why it's not for everybody, but it's a nice little routine. Now I will just leave you with this one note here. I've taken the damage off. I'm coding in the monster. But I never checked if the monster was dead. So I should really also do a check here that says if HP is less than or equal to zero, you know, do destroy stuff. Right? And I didn't do that one in there, right? That's stuff you can do on your own. Okay, this was more just about the splash damage portion. Hopefully that helps you get started and gives you a couple ideas how you can get the splash damage stuff working in your games. Thanks for watching.